technical note on the repair of anterior horn of the lateral and medial meniscus with knotless anchor. The authors do not have any conflict of interest and there are no disclosures. A diagnostic arthroscopy is done using standard arthroscopy portals with patient in supine position at 90 degrees of flexion. The tear of the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus is confirmed. The probe is passed from the AM portal to identify the presence of cyst below the intermeniscal ligament. The scope was switched to AM portal and the cyst was then entered from outside in with an 18 gauze spinal needle to locate the position of the cyst. A 3.5 mm shaver was introduced through the AL portal. The fat around the cyst wall was shaved and the cyst was exposed. A punch biopsy was taken and sent for histopathology. The cyst fluid can be seen extruding out, confirming the intracystic location of the shaver tip. The cyst wall was completely excised with the help of a shaver and a radio frequency ablator. The hook probe was inserted to palpate the retropatellar region as well as the area of the anchor insertion and anterior horn of the lateral meniscus. A number two fiber wire was loaded on a self suture retrieving device and a stitch was taken through the meniscocapsular junction. This stitch was taken in a mattress fashion. Another stitch was taken similarly to cover the entire length of the tear with the help of anti-grade suture passing device. The knots were tied using a knot pusher with half hitches to secure the fixation. A suture retriever is passed and both the stitches are taken into the retriever through the same port to avoid the soft tissue bridging. Then the attention is directed towards the preparation of the anterolateral aspect of the tibia for anchor fixation. The anterolateral aspect of the tibia was prepared to uncover the subchondral bone and a hole was punched with a starting awl. Taking care of the soft tissue bridge of 4.5 mm knotless suture anchor was inserted in the previously punched hole. The tension over the sutures was adjusted and the anchor was fixed at 90 degrees of knee flexion. The procedure is completed by cutting the suture ends and examining the final repair. The same technique is used for the anterior horn medial meniscus stairs with the perimeniscal cyst. With standard arthroscopy portals, a probe is passed through the AM portal and the extent of the cyst was examined. The scope was shifted to AM port and 18 gauge spinal needle was passed from AL port to puncture and confirm the location of the cyst. A 3.5 mm shaver was passed through the AL port to completely expose the cyst and a hook probe was passed to delineate and dissect the cyst. A punch biopsy was taken for histopathological examination. The cyst fluid is seen extruding at this point in time. Complete cyst evacuation was carried out with the help of a hook probe and cyst wall was shaved off exposing the anteromedial aspect of the tibia. The capsular rent was identified and the repairability was confirmed with the tissue grasper. An anti-grade suture passing device was passed to take bites through the anteromedial capsule and they were parked in the anterolateral port. Now the attention is diverted to anterior horn of medial meniscus. A stitch is taken through the meniscocapsular junction of the anterior horn of the medial meniscus in mattress configuration. The arthroscopic knot is tied with a knot pusher. Hereafter the preparation of the anterior medial tibial surface is done with starting punch which is introduced to punch a hole for a 4.5 mm knotless anchor. The meniscocapsular sutures are threaded through the anchor and the anchor is deployed. After cutting the sutures from the anchor, the capsular stitch is tied to reattach the capsule completing the repair. Hook probe is then passed to examine the final repair along with the intermeniscal ligament. Thanks for watching.